know a person who is thinking of joining the military, whether it, whether it be a son, a daughter, a grandson, a nephew, niece, whatever. Well, I'm going to tell you about what they're going to go through for the next 8 to 12 weeks. Now, Army basic training is 8 weeks. It used to be. <laughs> it's been 41 years since I went. I think Air Force training is 6 weeks. Boot camp is what I'm talking about. And Marine Corps was 12. And Navy, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about them guys, the swimmers. So, first thing that's going to happen, okay, they go to, obviously, they go to the recruiter. They get signed up. Uh, they pick their jobs, okay? Just like the, the military is just like everyday life, you have a job, a certain job that you're going to do. And you get a test that you take. It's called an ASVAB test. Uh, it's kind of like SATs, you know, if you're going to go to college. Well, it's going to it's gonna determine what, what kind of skills you have, uh, what kind of brain power you have, and give the Army an idea. Uh, I'm using the Army as an example because that's what I know, is where to place you. So in my case, my first job was firefighter. And I would have to go to Schnute Air Force Base for for my AIT, which is after your basic training, you go to the school directly after. So the first thing that happens, you go to the they're going to go to the rec uh, recruiter. <laughs> yep. And after everything's good there, and if they get accepted, then they ship them off, and it could be a month later, two months later. They ship them off to the MEP station, and the MEP station is the Military Entrance Processing Station, where you get your physicals. Uh, they, you know, they want to see if you're nuts, and they want to see how you are physically, and they take care of other paperwork there. So you get your physicals. Okay, all that goes well. Then you get to go either on a plane or a bus. First, you're going to have orders. Orders are just a piece of paper telling you where you're going for your basic training. In the military, you get a set of orders for every new assignment that you get. So you will get one for that. Usually, the first set of orders will have your AIT station on that set of orders, uh, if I remember right. Now, it's been, I, I went in in September of 83. Things have changed a lot in the military since then, so I may be, I'm just telling you what I know, and I also was a drill sergeant, so I can understand that side, and I can give you some reasons of why they do what they do. Some people may not even know these things. Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get on the plane or the bus. In my case, I took a bus. The, the Army used to put you on a bus a lot. You're going to get to your base where you're training i went to fort leonard wood missouri and uh it, i don't know it always seems you get there like one two in the morning well they'll be waiting on you there will be drill sergeants waiting on you uh you unload off the bus i don't remember the drill sergeants getting on the bus that's coming later you come off and you and you get off the bus you go into a, a building that has a bunch of chairs set out. That is like your orientation. They're going to tell you what's happening. You're in there, I think, maybe an hour. And then they assign you, you know, they take you to the barracks. This is your first night in the Army in barracks. And uh, I went in these old, old barracks, you know, World War One and World War Two barracks, where they're open bays with bunks as far as you can see. The bathrooms, no no stalls, toilets right next to each other. Kind of like if you was in jail. But it may be worse. So you're there a couple of days. You get you get fitted for uniforms. Everything that you're going to wear, your 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 BDUs, your Class A uniforms. I don't even know what they call them now. They don't even have the same uniforms now. You get fitted with your boots, and that is a unique experience because you're in line, and there's a line for pants. Okay, there's a station. You go get your pants. You get your coats. They don't ask you your sizes. They look at you and hand them to you. 
And you don't sit there and go, oh, well, this ain't going to fit. You know, you take it. And it fits, usually. Uh, my boots were a little tight when I got my first boots. So after you get your uniforms, then you start learning the basics. You're gonna learn how to. You're gonna learn how to march, uh, right face, left face, uh, the basic drills. You know. So when you get to, you, you're you're thinking in your mind you're in basic training already. They don't tell you you're not there yet. You are not. <laughs> you are not in. <laughs> you're not there yet. And they don't tell you much. Any, they don't tell you much. You don't really understand what's going on. And so you get to thinking, you know, they take you to the PX because you get a little bit of an allowance to buy your soap and your toothbrush. And everything that you brought with you is confiscated usually. Uh, and so you got to go buy that stuff in the PX. And you're thinking, man, this is a cakewalk. Then they load you on a bus. And they take you to your <laughs> to your company, to your barracks. And the buses all pull in. 150 guys, 160 guys, maybe a little more. And you see them out the window. There they are, about 10 to 12 drill sergeants. Two per platoon. Platoon is about 50 men. And they do not wait for you. They jump on that bus. Let me see. I had a picture. No, I got a picture of something else. They run onto that bus with cuss words you have never heard and his, uh, voices that you have never heard in your life. Get your goats! Oh, I can't even say it. I can't even say it on YouTube, man. The world is soft now. You're scared. Man, you're getting a real dose of reality right now. They heard you all off the bus. You drop your duffel bags in formation. And you stand there. And everything gets dumped out and gone through. Everything. They're sizing you up. They're going to come up to you one at a time. And that's where you're going to get your nickname. One of them sees something in you. Or it's your name. He could use your name as a nickname. That's going to stick for the whole eight weeks. You got that nickname. And that's what your buddies are going to call you. <laughs> it ain't easy, man. And the way you get around, uh, one of the very first things, well, before I say that, one of the very first things they're going to do, they're going to go have you change into your PT gear, or they may not. They're going to take you on the worst physical fitness run of your life. In my case, they take you at Fort Leonard Wood. They take you up this big hill. You run up to this big hill and they it's called dog you. They dog the hell out of you. Push ups, sit ups, front leaning rest position. They destroy you up there. And what they're doing is they're trying to see who the strongest soldiers are. Well, not even their recruits. They want to see the, the, your strengths. They want to weed out the weak people because the weak people are going to need extra work. They're thinking of picking platoon leaders, squad leaders. So they want to see who's in the best shape, who has the most brains, there's a lot of things that go on that they do that you don't realize. And you are now thinking, what have I done? This sucks. And as the weeks go on, each week seems to get a little, I don't know that the weeks get easier, but your mind, you're mentally prepared for anything that can happen. You get weapons training, a lot of PT, physical physical fitness uh, you know they're teaching you first aid you learn so many things in eight weeks and the weeks go slow very slow now these bases are very big fort leonard woods huge and the way that you get around now these are called cattle cars 
That's exactly about what they are. They're called cattle cars, and there'll be four, maybe three, four, five of these being pulled by a truck. Okay, and then on the inside, they look like this. This is man, this brings back memories. You're crammed in there, and it's graffiti everywhere. Two weeks to go, four weeks to go. You see all the graffiti from previous cycles. And you you think that the eight eight weeks is never gonna get here, and finally it approaches, and the last few days, you really start, you know, the drill sergeants ease up on you. They know your training's done. And sometimes you can even talk to some of them like human beings. Something I. But they're never going to lighten up on you 100%. Uh, a lot of guys don't make it. A lot of guys do not make it past the first week, second week. At some point, there's always a guy that's going to be dropping out, whether it's he can't handle it physically, or he gets injured. Uh, there are some mental cases in there too. We've had we had a few of them in my in my uh, company, <laughs> but you, you know that's why they do a lot of the things they do. They want to see your mental capacity, your physical capacity. Uh, you know, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't want to ever go back, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. And for the record. Drill Sergeant Academy was much harder than basic training. I mean, it has to be because you have to you have to train them. You you can't train somebody to do a hundred push-ups if you can't do them yourself. And that was probably one of the best uh, shapes I the best shape I've ever been in in my life. And I had just come out of surgery. I had a spleen rupture in January. I was actually supposed to go in January of '87, and my spleen ruptured. And so I couldn't go to that training, so I had to go in May. If I would have went in January, I would have went to Fort uh, Sill, Oklahoma. I was in Oklahoma. But, no, I had to go in May to Fort Polk, Louisiana. And it was miserable there. Absolutely miserable. In May and June, and man, it is so hot there. And But the difference is it's harder physically and mentally but at 4 o'clock, because you're already an NCO, at 4 o'clock, your day's over. You can go do whatever you want. But if you come back the next morning in formation and there's alcohol on your breath, you are out. They kick you out of the training. And you don't go through all that for nothing. And then there's, you know, the book work. There's a lot of that that you have to learn. But I'm not here to talk about my experience. I'm here to tell you, if you got somebody going in, just be in a little, you know, workout, have them work out a little bit before they go, get in shape. If you if you show up and you're overweight, which a lot of kids today are, they're going to have trouble. They are going to have trouble, and it's going to be tough, and they may not make it. So I started running and working out. I mean, I was in the boxing in that before, so I was already in good shape. So it really wasn't nothing hard for me, uh, but... Yeah, if you're a little overweight and you're you and these kids today sit around playing video games, you know they're not in top physical condition, and they're gonna. I don't know. They might be soft on them today in basic training. They may give them little cupcakes with candles on them when they go in. Oh, come on over here, sweetheart. Sit down. Are you scared? Don't be scared. Oh, oh. Yeah, I don't think it's to that point yet, but it's close. Thanks for watching. Happy trails.